Izanami, the sister and wife, died from burns in her birth canal while giving birth to Kagatsuchi, the fire god. Izanagi, the brother and husband, chased her to Yomi, the shadowy land of the dead, and tried to bring his wife back. On the way back, the wife urged her husband not to look back, but he couldn't help himself, and he turned around and saw his wife, who had become extremely ugly. It is true that appearance is power, as Izanagi was also a face judger. So he completely turned his back on his ugly wife and blocked her return to the earth with a huge stone at the Yomotsu Hirasaka, cavern that was the entrance of Yomi. After returning to the earth alone, Izanagi thought it was bad luck that he had been to Yomi. So he performed a purification ritual. In the process of purifying his body, he created the gods of the Japanese islands. Follow me and subscribe to my channel. Together we explore the stories behind Japanese mythology and ideas and myths by our no will. Izanagi first cleansed his left eye, giving rise to Amaterasu Omikami. Amaterasu Omikami is the goddess of the son of Japanese mythology and is considered to be the ancestor of the Japanese royal family. Unlike most national myths, the Japanese sun goddess is female, but of course in folklore, it is also considered a male god. Izanagi washed his right eye and gave birth to Tsukiyomi no Makoto, short for Tsukiyomi or Tsukiyomi, the god of the moon. There is no record of the gender of this god. The Kotaijin Gugishiki Cho is a compendium of the rituals and ceremonial books of the, the Grand Shrine of Eyes, which is a Shinto shrine dedicated to the solar god Asamaterasu. It is recorded that Tsukiyomi no Makoto is a man riding a horse wearing a purple Mikado and holding a large sword made of gold. It is recorded here that Tsukiyomi is honored as a male god. Amaterasu Omikami told Tsukiyomi to visit the earthly country, Toyo Ashihara no Nakatsukuni. Yukimochi, the goddess of food, turned her head toward the land and spat out rice, and then turned her head toward the sea and spat out fish and shrimp, etc., which she was going to share with everyone at a banquet. Seeing this, Tsukiyomi was furious and scolded the goddess of food. How dirty and despicable. How dare you entertain me with the things you spit out of your mouth. So he drew his sword and beheaded the goddess of food. Amaterasu Omikami was furious and scolded Tsukiyomi. You are an evil god. We don't have to see each other again. So Amaterasu Omikami, who represented the sun, and Tsukiyomi, who represented the moon, were separated. So the sun and the moon never met again. After the death of Yukimochi, the goddess of food, silkworms grew from her head, rice seeds from her eyes, millet from her ears, red beans from her nose, wheat from her genitals, and soybeans from her rectum. Takamimisubi, the god of agriculture, takes these seeds out of her body and sows them in the earth. In another version, the head of Yukimochi also produces cows and horses. In short, after Yukimochi's death, her body evolved into various kinds of food that people needed. Izanagi washed his nose next and gave birth to Suzanu no Makoto, or Suzanu, for short. Izanagi had Amaterasu Omikami rule Takamagahara, plain of high heaven. Tsukiyomi ruled the night, and Suzanu ruled the oceans. Suzanu cried and howled so often because he missed his mother, Izanami until the mountains withered and the rivers dried up. In a fit of rage, Izanagi banished him to Nindokuni, which means land of roots. Before going forward to the Nindokuni, Suzanu went to Takatinkara to say goodbye to Amaterasu Omikami. But when he was walking, the mountains and rivers shook. Amaterasu was so shocked that she thought he was going to invade Takatinkara and prepared to face her with full armor. When Suzanu arrived and explained his purpose, Amaterasu Omikami was still skeptical, so she agreed to bear children for each other as proof. Sure enough, sex is the best oath, and consanguinity is the most effective guarantee. Amaterasu Omikami takes Suzanu's ten-span sword broken into three pieces and put into the well, indomitable, to wash, and then put into the mouth to bite, and then spit out the mist, and then gave birth to the three Manakata goddesses, to Karabim, Ichikishimahim and Tajitsuhime. 
Suzanu took the 500 otos of the strings of the Juliasakani no Magatama, which Amaterasu unwind in her hair and round her wrists, puts them into the indomitable and washes them, then bites them into the mouth and blows out the mist to give birth to the five male gods. Aim no Oshihomimi, which means ruling rice ears of heaven. Aim no Hoi, which means heavenly grain sun. Amatsuhikoni, which means little lad of heaven. Ikutsuhikoni, and Kumano Kasubi, which means wonder worker of bear moors. Amaterasu Omikami believed that the five male deities created by Suzanu were her own offspring, as Magatama belonged to her. Enraged, Suzanu, who also favors men over women, wreaks havoc in Takamagahara, destroying his sister's rice patties and defecating in her palace. Amaterasu Omikami defends his brother by saying that the feces was thrown by drunkenness and that he buried the ditch because he thought the land was too valuable. However, while Amaterasu Omikami was weaving cloth for the gods on a loom, Suzanu flayed the skin of a heavenly piebald horse, cut a hole in the roof of the loom room, and threw down the flayed blood horse. One of the weavers was impaled in the nether regions and died. Amaterasu Omikami finally became enraged and retreated to Amano Wado, heavenly rock cave. The heavens and the earth were plunged into darkness, and all kinds of disasters ensued. The gods consulted with Omoikane, which means having the wisdom and thoughtfulness of many people. They deliberated on a countermeasure and decided to have the goddess aim no Yuzumi no Makoto dance with a bamboo leaf in her hand, standing on an inverted bucket. As she jumped, she slipped out of her dress, leaving her breasts and female organ exposed, and the gods laughed as they watched. Amaterasu Omikami was puzzled and slightly opened the door of Amano Wado to see what was going on, and Aim no Yuzumi said, I am glad to see a god who is more honorable than you. A god offered a mirror to Amaterasu Omikami, and Amaterasu thought that she was the more noble god in the mirror. She opened the door of the Amano Wado completely to get a better look at it, and the hiding god Aim no Tajikaro took advantage of the situation and dragged Amaterasu Omikami out of the Amano Wado. The sky and the earth once again brightened, there's a contradiction here. It's darkness outside of the Amano Wado. So it becomes illogical for Amaterasu to open the door in order to see more clearly. Why would she need to open the door wider when she brings her own light? But gods always have nothing to do with logic. And Japanese mythology is littered with such contradictions. Think about how Izanagi and Izanami flew a pair of birds to teach them about sex before they had not procreated everything. The image of Aim no Yuzumi was portrayed as a witch, and she makes several appearances in Japanese mythology, almost always topless. She is supposed to be the most primitive native Japanese god, a representative of the priestesses of ancient clan societies. She is also a clan god. The gods then cut off the beard and nails of Suzanu and made him pay a fine of 1,000 tables full of gold to atone for his sins. The five male deities were entrusted to Amaterasu Omikami, and Suzanu took the three goddesses to Nino Kuni. The entrance to Nino Kuni is located in the same place as Yomi, in the Yomotsu Hirasaka. Japanese scholar Nobitsu Nasego argued that the two countries are in the same location, but have two very different interfaces, the same place and two sides. This is a very profound realization indicating that mother and son are together but can never meet. Amaterasu Omikami is officially recorded as female. The king of Japan claimed to be a descendant of Amaterasu Omikami, who is also believed to be the real queen of the historical record, Himiko, also known as Shingi Wao, which means ruler of Wa or friend of Wei. So there is a sister-brother relationship between her and Suzanu. However, some folklore suggests that Amaterasu Omikami was male. If this is the case, then the two are brothers. And thus, for the first time in the folklore of Japanese mythology, there is a record of same-sex intercourse. The ten-span sword is a type of sword that is ten fist lengths long. The sword is a representation of the male phallus in many ethnic legends. Rian Tenen House Eisler is a leading Austrian-born American cultural anthropologist and representative of the modern Renaissance. She is best known for her 1987 book The Chalice and the Blade, Our History, 
Our future. The book explains that the sword symbolizes the power of violence, terror, and destruction, and is a representation of masculinity, while the chalice is a representation of giving, connection, and love, and is a representation of femininity. The three sacred treasures are the Imperial Regalia of Japan and consist of the sword Kusanagi no Tsurugi, the Miryata no Kagami, and the Jewel Nasakani no Magatama. They represent the three primary virtues, valor, the sword, wisdom, the mirror, and benevolence, the jewel. The Japanese royal family believed that the king's principles are God's principles. The mirror was to be likened to the sun, the jade to the moon, and the sword to the star. And when all three were present, heaven and earth would be bright. The Yasakani no Magatama has a circular hole in its tail which shows that the Yasakani no Magatama itself is a representation of female. The sword Kusanagi no Tsurugi and the moon Yasakani no Magatama denote divine intercourse. Chen Shu, courtesy named Ching Zuo, was a native of Enhan County, now Nanchang City, Sichuan Province, Basi County, China, who lived from the Three Kingdoms period to Jin Dynasty in China. He lived around the time of the time of the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius Severus Alexander, to the Western Roman Empire, the Four Emperors. He authored the Chinese history book, The Records of the Three Kingdoms, and is one of the most highly regarded of the 24 histories. In the Biography of Japan in Volume 30 of the Book of Way of the Records of the Three Kingdoms, is the earliest surviving record of ancient Japan in the world. The 1,988-word biography describes the situation in Japan before the establishment of the Yamataikoku and Wakoku, i.e. The Yao period. The country formerly had a man as ruler. For some 70 or 80 years after that there were disturbances and warfare. Thereupon the people agreed upon a woman for their ruler. Her name was Himiko. She occupied herself with magic and sorcery, bewitching the people. Though mature in age, she remained unmarried. She had a younger brother who assisted her in ruling the country. After she became the ruler, there were few who saw her. She had 1,000 women as attendants, but only one man. He served her food and drink and acted as a medium of communication. She resided in a palace surrounded by towers and stockades, with armed guards in a state of constant vigilance. It is recorded here that when the Japanese nation was in turmoil, Hemiko, who was good at doing the way of the devil and was able to confuse the people, was made queen and was assisted by her younger brother. This is very close to the legend of Amaterasu Omikami and Sushiro Ozun, whose descendants formed the lineage of the Japanese royal family. According to astronomical calculations, two solar eclipses occurred in the Kitakyushu region on March 24, T4780, and September 5, T4880, around the time of the passing of Himiko. Such a statement is consistent with the Japanese myth that Amaterasu Omikami hid in Nama no Wado, and the world was thus devoid of light. In addition, statistically projecting using the average reign of the emperors, the era of Queen Himiko and the era of Amaterasu Omikami also coincide. Ashihara no Nakatsukuni, which means the middle country of reed beds, is the world between Takatinkara and Yomi in Japanese legend, and actually represents the island of Nippon. It is also known as Toyo Ashihara no Nakatsukuni or simply Nakatsukuni. Amaterasu Omikami sends her eldest son, Aim no Ushiho Mimi, who was born to his younger brother, to rule over Nakatsukuni, Aim no Ushiho Mimi, or Ushiho Mimi for short, looked up in the sky and realized that there was a great commotion in Nakatsukuni, and reported it to Amaterasu Omikami. Amaterasu Omikami consulted with Omakane, the god of wisdom and sent his second son, Aim no Hohi, to suppress it. Aim no Hohi was ordered to go to Nakatsukuni, but he flattered the god Omananushi, and the two of them worked together to build the country and teach the people taboos and medicine. And after three years, he did not even go back to report to Amaterasu Omikami. At this time, Aim no Oshihomimi married Takahata Chijihime. She is the goddess of textiles and the daughter of Takami Musubi which means High Creator. The two gave birth to Amino Hoakori, and Aim Nigishi Kyunini Gishi Amatsuhiko Hiko, Ononiniji no Makoto. 
which means the great god Niniji, of the imperial state, the child of the son of many talents, known simply as Niniji no Makoto, which means the great god Niniji. So the gods discussed, reported to Takamimisubi, sent Aim no Wakahiko, which means a young boy in heaven, the son of Amatsukuni Tama, went to the Nakatsukuni, and presented him with the, the gift of sky antler bow and skybird arrow. After Aim no Wakahiko going to Nakatsukuni, he married Shitatira Haim, the daughter of Omananushi. And this time, he slacked off even more, and eight years passed without going back to report the results. So Takami Musubi sent a bird named Nikim down to Nakatsukuni to check in on him. Then Nikim descends to the Sursita Philum in front of Aim no Wakahiko's door, and chants the edict of the Takami Musubi. Upon hearing this, a Manosagium, a wicked deity, has ability to see into a person's heart, advises Aim no Wakahiko to shoot the bird. Aim no Wakahiko took out the sky antler bow and hitched up the skybird arrow and shot it out. The arrow pierced through Zinakim's chest and then went straight up into the sky and landed in front of the seat of Takami Musubi. Seeing that the arrow was stained with blood, Takami Musubi said, This is the arrow that I have given to Aim no Wakahiko. And he showed it to the gods and said, If Aim no Wakahiko had not disobeyed, this arrow would have killed the evil god and come here. If Aim no Wakahiko had had an evil heart, then this arrow would have killed him. He then throws back the Skybert arrow, which kills sleeping Aim no Wakahiko in the chest. There is another version of the story about the marriage of Aim no Wakahiko, similar to the Han Chinese myths and some narratives in Greek mythology as well as explaining the origin of Tanabata, meaning evening of the seventh, also known as the Star Festival in Japan. We will explore this in a later chapter, because the story itself, with its many metaphors, needs to be discussed in detail in a separate chapter. Subsequently, Amaterasu Omikami dispatched Takemikazuchi, a god of thunder and a sword, and Aim no Torifune to Nakatsukuni. Aim no Torifune means deity heavenly bird boat. It is more likely that Aim no Torifune was the boat that carried Takemi Kazuchi from Takamagahara to Nakatsukuni, rather than the god. Takemi Kazuchi declares Amaterasu Omikami's will to Omananushi to give up Nakatsukuni. Unwilling to do so, Omananushi ordered his son, Koto Shironushi, to answer on his behalf. Koto Shironushi, also known as Yaikoto Shironushi no Kami. He agreed to accept the rule of the heavenly gods, surrendered his spear, and left Izumo, an old province of Japan. Takemi Kazuchi then asked Omananushi again, Your son Koto Shironushi has agreed to cede the country. Do the other sons have any comments? Omananushi replied, Probably the only one of my sons who would have a problem with this would be Takemi Nakata. As he was saying this, this same Takemi Nakata no Kami came bearing a tremendous boulder which means a boulder so large it would take a thousand men to pull, on his fingertips and said, Who is it who has come to our land and is talking so furtively? Come, let us test our strength. I will first take your arm. When Takemi Kazuchi no Kemi allowed Takemi Nakata no Kemi to take his arm, he changed it into a column of ice, then again changed it into a sword blade. At this, he, Takemi Nakata, was afraid and drew back. Then, Takemi Kazuchi no Kemi, in his turn, demanded the right to take hold of the arm of Takemi Nakata no Kemi. When he took it, it was like taking hold of a young reed. He grasped it and crushed it, throwing it aside. Immediately, he, Takemi Nakata, ran away. They pursued him and caught up with him by the lake of Suwa in the land of Shinano. As they were about to kill him, Takemi Nakata no Kemi said, Pray do not kill me. I will go to no other place. Also I will not disobey the commands of my father, Okuninushi no Kami, and will not disobey the words of the words of Yaikoto Shironushi no Kami. I will yield this central land of the reed plains in accordance with the commands of the heavenly deities. In the narrative here, the bout between Takemi Kazuchi and Takemi Nakata may be the origin of Sumo. With the surrender of Takemi Nakata, Okuninushi finally agreed to cede the land to the Amaterasu Omikami and withdrew himself into the unseen spirit world. Amaterasu Omikami then appointed Niniji no Makoto as the new ruler of Nakatsukuni. 
After the arrival of Niniji no Makoto, he ruled Nakatsukuni for 318,532 years. Nakatsukuni represents Japan. According to Nami Ogami, a well-known Japanese scholar, Takamagahara represents Asia. It is likely that this myth is a reflection of an earlier time, when a tribe of Asian horse-riding people sent their men into Japan several times. Due to the geographical independence of Japan, the soldiers and civilians who entered Japan made themselves kings and became the de facto rulers of Japan. In other words, the person who know witchcraft, Hemiko, based on the memories of her ancestors, combined this historical myth with her own and constructed the royal Shinto system of unbroken imperial line for Japan. When Niniji no Mikoto arrived at Gota Kuni, he met Kana Hanasakuya Haim, the daughter of Oyamatsumi, a god of mountains, sea, and war, and they had a one-night stand that resulted in a pregnancy. Niniji does not believe that a one-night pregnancy can grow up to be born, questioning her fornication. In her anger, Kana Hanasakuya Haim built herself a room without a doorway and moved in to wait for the birth. She swore, if my pregnancy is not the offspring of the grandson of Amaterasu Omikami, I and my children will be burned by fire and die. If my children are the offspring of the grandson of Amaterasu Omikami, the fire cannot harm the children I am carrying. Then set fire to the room, and the first one gave birth to Yumasachi Hiko, as the ancestor of the Hayato, meaning falcon people. The next born Hanasasori, the last one gave birth to Hori, was the founder of the Oori clan. Hori is also one of the ancestors of the emperors of Japan as the grandfather of Emperor Jimu. Hori, the youngest brother, specialized in hunting in the mountains, while the eldest brother, Yumasachi Hiko, known as Hodari no Makoto and the Kojiki, specialized in fishing. One day, the two brothers exchanged fishing rods and bows, but neither of them had any luck. The eldest brother regretted and asked the youngest brother for his hook, but the youngest brother lost the hook by accident. So he forged a basket of new hucks with his own knife and returned them to the eldest brother. Hodari, the eldest brother said indignantly, Not my old hucks, though much not to take. And more reproach his youngest brother, Hori. Hori was quite distressed and was walking along the seashore when he met Shiotsuchi Nuji. The old man, Shiotsuchi, builds a cage without holes and lets Hori sit in the cage and sink into the sea. Hori abandoned a cage at the bottom of the sea and marched to the palace of Ryujin, the dragon god. He saw that the palace was exquisite. In front of the gate there was a well, and by the well there was a surcitifolum tree with sparse branches and leaves. When Hori was leaning under the tree, a beautiful woman pushed the door open and drew water from the well with a jade bowl. When she saw Hori, she returned in surprise and told her parents, There is a rare guest under the tree in front of the door. Ryujin hosted a feast and invited Hori in. When he was seated, he asked him the reason for his visit, and Hori told him what had happened. Ryujin assembled all the fishes and shrimps and asked them where the hucks were, and they all said, I don't know, but the red woman, Seabrim, has a mouth disease and won't come. Ryujin summoned the Seabrim to probe its mouth and found the lost hook. The old man, Shiotsuchi Nuji the god of salt production and of spells and prophecies, helped Hori to retrieve his brother's fish hook and then put a curse on it. After Hodari, the eldest brother, retrieved the hook, he could no longer catch fish. The eldest brother was unable to catch any more fish. So Hodari submitted to Hori and lost the right to inherit the country. Hodari's descendants guarded the descendants of his youngest brother, Hori, for generations. Hori retrieves the lost hook from Ryujin's palace and marries Ryujin's daughter, Toro Tamaheim. After three years under the sea, Hori returns to land. By this time his wife was pregnant. Toro Tamaheim said to her husband, My concubine is about to give birth and will appear on a day when the winds are strong and the waves are high. So please build a maternity chamber for me to wait for my concubine. Later, Toru Tamaheim came ashore with her younger sister, Tamayuri Haim. And before she gave birth, she said to Hori, Please do not watch while my concubine is in labor. As a result, Hori couldn't help but spy on her 
and when she gave birth, she turned into a dragon and said in shame, If the grandson of Amaterasu Omikami hadn't humiliated me by spying on me, the land and the sea would have been connected and there would have been no separation forever. But now that he has humiliated me, how can we both be connected in our feelings? So she wrapped her son, the Gaiafukiezu no Makoto, in grass and abandoned him on the beach and left herself. According to another version, Toyo Tamaheim transformed into enormous wani, a crocodile, which in ancient times also referred to a shark. When she returned to the sea, she entrusted her younger sister, Tamayuri Haim, with the care of her son. As Ugaya Fukiezu grew of age, he married his aunt and eventually conceived a child, Jimu, who became the first emperor of Japan. According to the Japanese mythologist Matsumura Takeo, a woman giving birth as a native and forbidding her husband to spy on her represents the custom that a woman is caused to be forbidden to look at her during the fasting period for the worship of the gods. And if she violates it, she is subjected to a social sanction. The transformation of the Toro Tamaheim into Wani, on the other hand, suggests that the sea people worship a totem such as the crocodile. Hori ruled Japan for 637,892 years. His son, the Gaia Fukiezu, ruled Japan for 836,042 years. A descendant of Ugaia Fukiezu, Kamuyamato Iwerbiko no Sumura Mikoto, was officially enthroned in the legendary year 660 BC and named the title of King of Japan as Emperor. Since then, the Japanese royal family has been called the Unbroken Imperial Line and has been passed down from the first Emperor Jimu to the present day, the only head of state in the world who still uses the title Emperor, making the Japanese royal family the oldest royal family in the world. Chinese characters were introduced to Japan around the 5th century AD, when some Begja monks brought Chinese Buddhist scriptures to Japan. Only thereafter did Japan begin to refine its writing system and keep written records of classical texts. Prior to this time, Japan was supposed to have a native mythological system, like other peoples of the world. These myths and legends were passed down by word of mouth until 681 AD, when Prince Doneri began to write the Nihon Shoki, which was completed in 720 AD. In 711 AD, Empress Jinmai ordered the Ono Yasumaro to begin compiling the Kojiki, which was completed in 712 AD. These myths and legends were recorded with human modifications. Therefore, Japanese myths were written mainly for the purpose of creating an emperor who would be unbroken imperial line. So, there is neither creation of the world nor creation of human beings, and it is the only mythological system in the world that has only the creation of a king. At the same time, the records in the myths reflect the tortuous process by which the ancients migration from the Asian continent to Japan except for the names of the gods in the records, which are probably all native to Japan and true. The specific deeds are not easy to recognize under the correction of king-making. The master said, It is only the son of heaven who receives his appointment from heaven. Officers receive their appointments from the roller. Therefore, if the roller's orders be conformed to the mind of heaven, his orders to his ministers are also conformed to it. But if his orders be contrary to that mind, his orders to them are also contrary to it. It is said in the book of poetry, how strong the magpies, battling fierce, each one to keep his mate, how bold the quails together rush, upon the same debate. This woman, with no trait that's good, is stained by vicious crime, yet her I hail as Martianess, alas, well worth the time. Therefore, Japanese mythology can also be called the fairy tale of the Japanese royal family. Follow me and subscribe to my channel. Let's explore Arno Will's book, Ideas and Myths. We will embark on a journey of destiny and see how heroes struggle with fate.